So uh, today I'll be presenting a paper that um, me and with my co-author uh, Debashi Sa we, we came up with back in 2019. And um, and yeah, so it was it, this, so we, we submitted to the conference in 2020. So, and then later it was published in Quantum. So the references are here. Uh, I'm a PhD student at ICDQT in, in Dansk. Uh, I work in special cybersecurity group with Marcin Pawlowski. And okay, so um, the title of the dog is actually what's the message here? It's uh, quantum stuff. Prescriptions mean states, uh, measurements and transformations are more distinct than they're distinguishable. So it's a, it's kind of a weird title, but the rest of the dog will justify uh, the, the, the particular choice of the words up there. Okay, so it's foundational uh, and uh, the basic motivation is to probe what, what, what kind of a universe we inhabit, what, uh, how does it look like? So we, we say quantum mechanics is a fundamental theory of the universe, but um, we don't really speak about what the reality looks like. And um, one way to approach this problem is to come up with models of reality and look at statistical predictions of those models of reality and compare them with quantum theory. And if you get a um, contradiction or a no-go, that way you can reject that particular model of reality or classes of models of reality. So the, uh, this can, the, the, the way it has been formalized is referred to as uh, the hidden variable framework or the ontological framework. And um, if we uh, look at the rest of physics, all other um, rest of physics is, is basically a realist uh, view of the universe. So such, um, such studies and hidden variable framework is um, quintessential if you want to come, uh, if you want to combine uh, our other theories with quantum theory. The, my, 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 my personal motivation was uh, to get to uh, the ground of quantum advantage in so and it's motivated by previous such results uh here uh for instance uh the most famous one is bell's local causality and uh we know that it has spawned uh device independent information processing and uh and is related to quantum advantage in a lot of tasks uh, so and so on um uh, coach and specker non-contextuality is, is a generalization of Bell's uh, local causality, and there are papers that show that coach and specker non-contextuality can power advantage in com computation and communication tests. And then there is Specken's uh, non-contextuality, which I've worked on um, during the course of my PhD, and um, it has been shown to power uh, advantage in semi-device independent uh, information processing, parity oblivious multiplexing and state discrimination task. Uh, another one, one of the most ignored aspects of why this is, why hidden variable studies are really important for quantum advantage is that, we, is that comparing uh, quantum and classical systems of the same dimension does not scale well because classical dimension is very cheap. Um, a, a, a bit in a classical dimension is just uh, like could be just the voltage signal pretty easy to make and very reliably communicated. However, quantum dimension is or quantum systems of demand uh, of whatever, even lower dimension, they are expensive and they are fragile. So, so Today, what I'm going to do is uh, uh, this talk is going to be very simple. So the paper has a lot more. So I'm going to introduce a notion, an ontological notion, or a hidden variable uh, uh, notion of classicality, along with the no-go theorem that follows up uh, these work. So uh, Bell, Cochin, Specker, and Speckins. And I'm going to show that how, in our opinion, and we've justified it in the paper, it's it's slightly better than all of these notions as and I'll tell you how it is. But okay, so, okay, first, so if I think majority of this uh, conference and myself and most of the time, I'm an operationalist, so I don't really uh, care about how reality looks like. So what, what I'm really, uh, what I really care about is 
the algorithm or the bonds rule. So if you, um, an operationalist interpretation of quantum theory, of, uh, uh, of any theory or any microscopic theory, I, I don't know about that part, but is that if you give me the specifier of uh, a, a system, a preparation, and a specifier of the measurement uh, along with the outcome, I can churn out the probability in some way. So in particular, quantum theory is an operational theory. So it assigns density matrices and uh, POVM elements to measurement effect. And then we can use the Bond rule to uh, compute probabilities of, of uh, looking at uh, of, of that particular outcome, okay? And a realist interpretation of an operational theory is uh, when you say that stuff really exists in reality. So this is, people argue that this is not a great way to describe reality, but from a computational point of view, I think it's very well justified. So we say whenever we uh, have a physical system, it takes um, a, a state which we call an ontic state. So this is not optic, this is ontic. And in an ontic state space, so the, uh, or a hidden variable. So the idea is this could be an arbitrary large dimensional space, as long as it's measurable, everything is fine. Um, and in, in this uh, state, lambda is a list of, or, or, a, or a giant object in this uh, space, it could be arbitrary large. So this, this comes from Einstein's speculation about completeness of quantum theory. Okay, but, but due to the limitations of technology today and whatever, we, we, we say that we cannot prepare the hidden variable precisely, or we might never be able to. Uh, but so a, a, a preparation in the lab now then corres that, uh, corresponds to a probability distribution over the hidden variable which is a very general treatment of preparation in such model. So it, I denote this by mu lambda and it's generally denoted that way too. And similarly, a measurement is um, just a readout. So you take, uh, you, you, uh, so the measurement device looks at the ontic state and then produces an output uh, K with some probability. So we allow for not, um, not uh, probabilistic uh, readouts. So again, due to uh, technology and uh, related limitations. Okay, and um, so the real is they can also make predictions. Um, and this is just summing over our ignorance of Lambda, uh, summing over um, the response function or the response scheme uh, with the ignorance of our hidden variable. Okay. Okay, so, um, just like no signaling is there for, uh, is a prerequisite to Bell's local causality. Here we have a uh, operational prerequisite. So this, uh, I call this p-distinguishability, or we say that a set of preparations is p-distinguishable. Uh, this is a characterizing feature of preparations. Um, it's basically if, if there is a set of preparations from any given theory and uh, how well you can distinguish them uh, using all possible measurements in the theory. And uh, depending on, if you can distinguish them with P probability, we call them P distinguishable. So we start with a, a set of P distinguishable preparations. So th this is just uh, analogous to no signaling as we shall see. So this is a prerequisite. We have, I have a bunch of preparations and they are P distinguishable. Okay, um, okay. Uh, note here that distinguishable has the connotation of what I can do operationally because able, there is ability there in distinguishability. So it's an operational thing. It doesn't care about whether you're a realist or an operationalist or whatever. It's just how well you can do, uh, just like no signaling is. However, P distinctness or distinctness has the connotation of uh, uh, stuff existing in reality, so stuff really exists, and it's the it's the realist counterpart to distinguishability. Um, just a second. Oh. Oh. Yes. So again, we can uh, quickly see what it's just it's just the same thing. So we, we we these are the probabilities that were there in the previous slide, 
and now we are maximizing over all possible realist uh, measurements not restricted by the theory so these are all possible measurements these are just restricted by positivity and completeness of these schemes and so because these are uh, restricted only by positivity and completeness we can actually solve this maximization so the so we i uh, so what i've done here i've written the uh, the expression in the previous slide and expanded it out and then i noticed that in each run um if if each response scheme has to be just positive and uh, for each lambda they have to add up to one so i can just look at extremal points and this is a linear functional over the response scheme so i can just uh, go over the extremal points and the extremal points would look like uh, basically zeros for all k's but one or something like that so i can really solve the maximization and the uh, and after solving it i get um, uh, something like this which is just saying that uh, the the maximum probability corresponds to returning the label uh, of the preparation that was prepared with uh, maximum probability or which had the maximum probability of occurrence right here okay okay so the principle or something which is um, analogous to bell local causality states that p distinguishable preparations must have p distinct realist state or a explanation or a realist explanation with a p distinct realist state so basically we we just equate the operational distinguishability with ontological uh, distinctness and and uh, which implies that there is a set of uh, realist preparations which are p distinguishable underlying p distinguishable operational preparations so this is also a generalization of the no fine tuning principle that was recently uh, introduced by uh, Matt Leifer and and his poster okay mm. so this can serve as a, a, a criterion for characterization of operational theories um so we say if an operational theory allows for all sets of preparations in an operational theory if there is an explanation that allows for uh, uh, for for uh, for bounded ontological distinctness we say that this is classical or or satisfies bounded ontological distinctness or conversely um if there is at least one set of preparations which does not allow for such an explanation we say that theory is non classical or has excess ontological distinguishability okay okay first um if we if we just take a pair of preparations then we show in our paper uh that there, there you cannot get a wide you you always have a model that uh hidden variable model that will that will have the same operational and ontological distinguishability and this model is uh and a very old school uh, model it's 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 coach inspector sai epistemic model and so the existence of this model says that all all fragments of pairs of preparation or prepare and measure fragments with pairs of preparations are completely classical uh, in this particular formalism uh, in in this according to this criterion however when we go to um triplets of preparations we start seeing uh, nice things and so we are our, our proposition uh, or our first so this is a so we prove a statistical property of all all triplets of preparations in um theories that adhere to bounded ontological distinctness or our notion of classicality and it's basically that if i have a set of p distinguishable triplets of preparations then their average pairwise distinguishability will be bounded by 1 plus p by 2 okay so the the proof is really uh, easy and um, but first we look at what is average pairwise distinguishability is just um, you take two of them and you distinguish them and you you run the distinguishability procedure having a uh, using three different measurements for each pair and um average pairwise distinguishability has such an expression and 
then you have an ontological counterpart to it, which is called average pairwise distinctness. And we can again use the same argument as before to solve this further. So this is just basically a normalizing factor and choosing the pair of preparations and the same, um, uh, same expression we got to earlier for n preparations, but this is for two. So this is just two guys here. Okay, so now we are prepared for the proof. So the proof is really elementary. It comes from, uh, there's a book called First Course in Probabilities. Okay, so for any three real numbers, there is an identity of uh, this identity holds. Um, and to see how it holds, we will take for each lambda, there could be an associate, we can take an ordered list of these three numbers in, in, in say uh, a, a greater than b greater than c then just uh, the sum of all three is a plus b plus c here and this would be just a i guess yes and this would be c so this would be 2a plus b and similarly if we take all three pairs um the ma if you take the maximum in in all pairs we'll get two a's and a b so this thing holds for all numbers, but we, we need this to hold only for um, positive uh, probabilities of this form. But anyways, this holds for all real numbers. Okay, now we'll just sum over lambda on both sides. And if we do that, um, we get this guy here. Uh, so we, we already have the average pairwise distinctness here. And then I, I'll just say that this, this guy has to be greater than or equal to zero. So this entire thing will be less than or equal to just these two terms. Oh, sorry, whoa, sorry. Um, yeah. So just these two terms here. And this, if you recognize this, this was a uh, distinguishability or total distinguishability. So, and then um, we use our uh, notion of classicality to change the symbol, uh, ontic symbol to operational here. So we get SO right there. So this is equals to P. And, and but in, in general, we don't really need to change this to Lambda. So we get, so in general, we have that if you have the, if you have access to the ontic state space, uh, then you can do better in operational stuff. So um, so we get this equality is reinforced here. So the operational pairwise distinguishability is less than equal to one plus P by two. Now in quantum theory, we can show very easily that this is violated. So we'll make use of the Mercedes Benz state. And it's very easy to see that they are uh, two by three distinguishable, which, which if quantum theory was BODP adhering theory would have led to uh, 2.833 maximum success probability. Um, but if we do the computation for pairwise distinguishability for these states, we we arrive at a number half one plus root three by two, which is a violation. This is just, uh, there was no dimension of the underlying classical system assumed here. So this is just uh, uh, like a Bell inequality violation. Moreover, we say that to explain this average pairwise distinguishability, you need, um, I'm sorry. Uh, um, then you need root three by two distinct uh, states underlying them. So this is what we mean that, mean by they're more distinct than they're distinguishable. So justifying the title here. And um, this notion of classicality captures a lot more uh, than any other notion as resource. So when we do a hard random sampling of qubits and qubits, we get 72% violate this notion of classicality and 72% of qubits and 58% of qubits violates the, uh, this notion of classicality. Okay, now we are done. Now, now I'll just uh, compare, yeah, I know. Uh, two more slides and I'll be done. Um, so the biggest thing here is uh, one of the, uh, so what, what we have done is um, so if you look at all the ontological notions of classicality, they have some um, operational prerequisites such as no signaling for Bell's uh, local causality. And then there is an uh, operationally falsifiable ontological assumption, which is parameter independence in 
So this is justified operationally, but they, but these people, uh, Bell and Coach Inspector and Spec, they make some extra assumptions that are operationally non-falsified. We don't know where they come from. We can't argue with them. It's just there. So example of this is outcome independence. But here we have just taken an operationally falsifiable assumption and based on that, uh, shown non-classicality. And we also, in the paper, so there is a lot more in the paper, we also show that this is implicate quantumness. No signaling is a distinguishability condition. And, and from there, we can derive implications. So as a notion of classicality, BOD applies all other notions of classicality. And if any other notion of classicality is violated, this implies violation of BOD. So it's really the primal uh, feature of uh, quantum reparations. We also show that other notions do not imply BOD. That's a very cute proof in the paper. And it captures more non-classicality. So the set of classicality is the smallest in uh, for BOD here. So it captures more non-classicality than other. Um, there is a lot more in the paper. We add epsilons to generalize non-contextuality. And, and of course, we care about advantage. So we give two uh, different tasks that give advantage. The, the second one is my favorite, which is uh, Alice has some secret, but leaks a little bit. And I'm done. OK. Uh, yes, I'm done. OK. Uh, so there is a lot more in the paper. Do check out the paper. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure there is much more on the paper than than uh, than than the yeah, time well, that than what you will be able to 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 say on the time that you that has been yeah. given to you. But thank you very much for your presentation. So and sorry for cutting thank it you. short. In fairness no to problems. to uh, the next speaker, it's probably a good idea to um, address um, questions if there is any. Um, I was watching um, Discord and probably people have to digest the uh, the uh, thought provoking concepts but I do have a question if uh, so it's a very quick one and that addresses basically the, the the dimension of the Hilbert space that you have addressed so um, how about infinite dimensional systems so uh, do you have do you have any implications coming from the um, um, finiteness of your Hilbert space or the continu say the continuous versus discrete nature of the variables that you're looking the degrees of freedom that you're looking at? You can guess I'm a realist. <laughs> no, 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 no. So this, I, I use the uh, summation here for brevity, but in the paper we have done it with integration, but that's the only difference. And you can, so you as can long extend, as the space is extend. measurable, you can show this kind of non -class. You can extend infinite dimension systems. Okay, so um, what I suggest is that um, people will take the time to address their questions to Anuba through uh, through Discord. We thank Anuba for for his time and his very interesting presentation.